being consistent. You develop good habits by understanding what good habits are. Some people are born with this, but for most of us, it is an acquired skill. In the case of patient satisfaction, our patients are our judges, and they tell us the parts of our interaction with them that we need to improve on. Here comes the hard part. Once we're made aware of our deficiencies, it is crucial that we correct them. Very difficult to do because it took us years to cultivate those bad habits. So getting rid of them will not be an easy task. So that is where repetitive training and incentives come in. As I said earlier, very few of us are born with the talent to have great interpersonal skills, to be great communicators. In order to acquire those skills, most of us have to practice after, of course, recognizing our deficiencies over and over and over again until it becomes second nature. I believe that every human being has the capacity to change and acquire a new skill. Internal and external motivation are crucial. How do you motivate a healthcare provider to be a better communicator? And training where the most impact can be achieved, good interpersonal skills have to be cultivated throughout medical education from day one. In addition to learning how to deal with heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, healthcare providers have to be taught how to have meaningful interactions with patients, family members, and friends. Clearly, the decision to include patient satisfaction in a medical program falls squarely on the leadership of that educational program. So the leadership has to view that part of medical education to be as important as the nitty-gritty of medicine. Out of training, a lot more difficult to do. Why? Because the bad habits have taken root, but change is still possible. One way to do this is the Obamacare way. Make patient satisfaction as part of the reimbursement formula. The other way that I prefer is to remind the healthcare provider of the association between satisfaction and clinical outcome. Every healthcare provider at his core is looking for ways to make their patients better. The healthcare provider has to be reminded that good clinical rapport starts with great communication. You want your patients to do well? You want to diminish bounce backs? Cut down readmission rates? Place the outcome of your interaction with the patient above everything else. Financial incentives will not hurt either. Compensate healthcare providers who take the time to improve their interpersonal skills at a higher rate. Clearly, the healthcare organization will have financial benefits in terms of customer loyalty. Let's make sure part of those benefits are passed on to the healthcare providers.